the first slide. So we're kind of done with our um, epidemic simulation, except we might want to turn it into a package that people can install and use directly. So to do that, let's go to the um, creating packages section. All right, so here we'll talk about first modules because um, modules are kind of a, they are packages contain modules, modules contain functions and um, type definitions and other definitions, values. So um, we'll need to go through how to write a module in order to write the package. Then we'll uh, talk about packages and testing. And then there is some about naming conventions and how to make your functions pretty um, and things to remember about variable scope um, that are good to know if you are actually writing a package that someone else might use. Okay, especially the naming, con naming conventions part. All right. Um, maybe I'll just continue sharing this for a moment longer. Okay, so yeah. So we've been using basically the notebook interface so far and REPL. The, so what you get when you type Julia, that's called a REPL. Um, those are good for development, for changing things and testing them and sort of doing rapid changes. But at some point, um, it will get limiting to always have to run the notebook. And um, it, it is easier to automate things in a text file. Um, it's also, um, so that is, I guess, mainly the use for scripts. Uh, that's when you start writing a script. You take um, the stuff in a cell, in, in the cell that's getting really long or a bunch of cells, you tend to always run in the same way. You take those and you put them in a file and then you can either include them so that it doesn't take too much space or you can um, run them using Julia, some uh, file name .jl, um, and run the whole process. So that is, um, the scripts are basically just for automating um, a workflow. Now, at some point you will also run into the point where you have a lot of names, um, a lot of either variables or function names, uh, a lot of stuff that is kind of all tied to the doing the same thing, all related to each other. Um, and then it makes sense to create a module um, so modules work a lot like what we've seen packages do. So they contain other names. So a module is essentially just a container for a bunch of bunch of functions and bunch of um, structures, uh, structs or types. Um, and you can refer to them. You can either use the using keyword to get some of that stuff directly into the main namespace, or you can use module name dot to refer to anything in the module. Okay, so this is how you write a module. Um, so you start with the module keyword. I will actually just demonstrate this. Um, where is my demonstration notebook here? So you start with module, uh, let's call it my module. You can have the export keyword so anything that is exported will go into the main namespace when you use or use the using keyword to get the module. My cool function, okay. And well, the module ends with the end keyword. In between, you can define a bunch of stuff. So let's define a function, my cool function, uh, which I have, I'm already exporting here it will just do some printing. So this is a function and let's define another function, but not we will not export this one. So this is my secret function. 
And, and what does it do? It prints, you found it, okay? So when we run this code, end, expected end in the definition of my secret function. Oh, um, I'm actually missing parentheses here. Um, not the best, um, not the best error message, but it did the job. I figured out what was going on. Um, okay. So this defined a module called my module and it, it's actually main dot my module now because I didn't do it in a file. Um, I didn't do it in a package. I just did it um, in the main namespace. So um, I now already have this um, main dot my, oops, my module. Okay, tab works to complete. So I can, uh, add a dot and tab to list all the stuff in there. Um, these are standard in any module and these are the two things I actually defined. By the way, you can also define, um, let's say x equals two. Now it's warning that it's replacing it. Um, that's fine by me. So now it also has an x, okay. So yeah, you can inspect and basically see all of even the secret function in there. We can also use the using keyword, but now we have to do main dot my module. So this works and now we have my cool function, but we don't have my secret function. It's undefined. It is still in my main dot, oops, main with a lowercase a dot my module dot my secret function. So this will still work. Uh, you found it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that the basic idea is um, I have a bunch of stuff um, that I've written for one specific purpose. So it makes sense to group them into a module um, to keep track of things. Now I could put this into a file. Um, in fact, I have oops, here. So I can have this in a file. In, I think it's in notebooks. My module.jl. This is without the x equals two here, but otherwise this is basically the same. Um, and then I can use the include statement to include that file. And it will, because it just takes a text in the file and plots it in directly into my code. Um, it's the same as having this in the cell. It will give a warning replacing my module. Um, uh, right, okay, because it's in notebooks. So this is the wrong path, notebooks. Like, so it will give a warning replacing my module, okay. So that's kind of an easy first way of defining a module or def I mean, taking some, um, some uh, functionality you have coded and putting that in a file um, in a way that kind of makes sense. Um, but you have to use the include statement. You have to know the exact path to the file and the module goes into this main namespace, which is kind of annoying. Um, you could possibly get around that. I mean, actually there is a way you can just say dot. Um, oh, you, it has to be in a using statement. So you can say using dot my module. Okay, it keeps giving me warnings because I'm, I keep re, uh, re-importing the same uh, module, but still. Um, so you can just say dot my module instead of main dot my module here, but still, um, it would be good to not need to know where the file is exactly for this include statement. And it would be good to not need to specify where in the namespace the module is. And that's what packages does. So uh, packages do. So packages are 
collections of essentially it, it's one module, um, one main module plus a bunch of other modules. Um, oh, it could be just the main module, just one module is enough. Um, that is Julia puts in a place where that it knows where it is. So you don't need to specify the path. Julia knows where it is. So you just specify the name and that's enough. Now packages also have some more information like dependencies. Um, you can specify um, all the uh, all the libraries, all, all of the uh, other packages that this package depends on. And when you install your package, it will automatically find and uh, install those dependencies. Um, and it can also define tests that will be run automatically. Um, well, that can be run using um, a single function called package.tests, uh, package.test. Um, but yeah, um, that's basically all the explanation needed here. Um, we already did an, an explanation of the import, so we don't need to do that part in the notes. Um, one thing that you commonly see in bigger packages is not really, it doesn't really make sense here, but you could, um, that you can in bigger packages use the include keyword inside um, inside your module. So you could, for example, define this function, my secret function in a file and then include it here. Now, since the function is really short, it doesn't really make sense to do that here, but sometimes you, um, have such a big module that you want to separate it into a, a few different files. Um, you can also create other modules and then you can use or import, um, let's say you can say using example, you probably want to do that on top here and I probably want to keep my second function. Okay. Um, so yeah, you probably want to do that on top maybe after the export keyword like this okay or import works just as well now even if you use using this example will still only be inside my module unless you want to export it here so um running using example inside a module doesn't mean that all the stuff in the example module goes into the main namespace as well. All right, um, it's 12, would be a good time for a break pretty soon. Let's do one more thing. So we have been using these packages pack or package package um, to maintain our packages. Um, so you know um, how to add or install a new package. And um, did we really do much else with the package? I mean, we did package.add and package.build in some cases because we had problems and so on. Um, and so this is a relatively familiar um, package already. One more thing, it, it will, we will go through a couple of new, uh, new things to do with this but there is a function called package.generate, which you can use to create a template for your own package. Now there are better templates out there, but this is the basic template. And we'll um, take a look and extend it a little bit. Um, but yeah, Luca remind me to mention or put in the notes, the um, templating thing as well. Yeah, I can add in the HackMD the note about yeah, this okay. package templates, which is kind of more advanced and sets the whole structure so for tests and documentation. But this is the basic um, package template. So we'll create a package called my package and just, then just see what it does. My package already exists. Right, okay. Um, let's go to Jupyter. And I think the best thing to do here, I mean, I could, just show you what's in there, but let's make sure that it's fresh. So I'll delete the folder and then run uh, package.generate. Okay, so I'm um, not sure if this has any readable content to you. It has the name my package here. Um, that's pretty much it. 
but it has created a folder called my package. Inside that folder, there are there is a source folder. That's where our um, Julia source files go. And um, it has in fact created a my package.jl file. Now you need to have a .jl file with the same name as the package in the source folder. And that contains the main module for this package. Um, and this now, as an example, contains this greet function. So in the mypackage.jl, you need to have a module called mypackage or just the package name. And again, that is the main module. So when you type using my package, it will that will not work quite yet because we haven't added this package, but um, it will import this module. Okay, so there was another file project.toml that's kind of unreadable at this point, well, it has the name. It has a unique identifier for your package and it has some information it pulled from my Git. Um, is it from Git or is it in a separate place? It might ask you for your name an email and a version number. Now we will be adding some, oh, I mean, we will be using the packaging system to automatically add some information here. Um, you don't need to manually take uh, change this file, but it contains the information necessary to install this package. Okay, so before we go on a break, let's do one more thing. Um, let's use this package. So um, if you haven't been typing along, please type this um, using package and package to generate. And then let's, um, then we'll do package.develop. So this is like package.add, except that um, when we change the contents, it will detect that and um, update um, update the package. So if you use package.add, it will just go into some um, some folder in the Julia path that you don't even know about. Um, but Julia knows exactly where it is, but you don't. And you cannot actually then change it without, um, at least you have to manually run package.add to change it. So doing it this way using package to develop means that it will follow uh, your changes in the directory. The way I was recommended to do this, it's using a function called package spec, but maybe Luca, you know a better way um, because having to run two functions is more than I would expect, but you need to provide a path to the develop function in some way. And that is for this package spec method. Um, so the path to the package is now just my package because we just created it in this folder, but this needs to be actually pointing to the package. Okay, package to develop my package. Uh, takes a moment. Okay, resolving, updating. So it's a lot like add, it's basically the same kind of um, output. Okay, and then we can use it using my package. Okay, pre-compiling and we can run a function. So um, since we are using it, oh no, um, because this one doesn't export anything. So it, we didn't get any new function in the main namespace, but we do have my package dot greet. <clears throat> so that runs this function, which prints hello world. Okay, um, a bit of a whirlwind thing, uh, tour. If you are not that familiar with package development, then um, don't worry. We will go through these steps essentially um, again when we create our uh, epidemic package. But before that, we'll talk a bit about environments and handling dependencies and so on. The important thing though is that we have told Julia where my package or JL is, I mean, Julia created it, but we could now, um, we could copy paste our entire simulation here and um, then using saying, using 
I package would give us all of our simulation functions. Um, we will actually rather call it the epidemic or whatever you want to call it and create another package again, just for repetition and for exercise. Um, are there any interesting, important questions before the break? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, you can watch through, uh, work through Lucas um, package development in Julia. Um, was a few weeks ago. So that has a lot of more advanced um, information. <clears throat> um, but yeah, unless there is something else, there's also something in the chat. <clears throat> All right, um, so let's come back in half an hour. Um, I need to create a new line at the end somehow. Like that, okay. Oh, that, sorry, it didn't work as I intended. All right. So when do we come back? Um, 12.40. That's the tiebreaker then. Um, so it is time to continue. Um, so this was completely expected, but still we don't have time for everything. Um, oh, one thing actually that um, I was going to add here, strings and IO. Um, so we don't have time for everything. So I've added a list of topics that we have prepared for. Um, so please vote on the one that you would like to see. I guess you can vote on multiple, why not? Yeah. Um, we'll just do the ones that with the most votes kind of in order and we'll see how many we have time for. Yeah, I think we can allow to vote on everything. It makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, if you vote on every single possibility, if you vote for everything. Not then exactly. Really matter, but... Change much, but uh, you yeah. can do it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So let's finish the creating. So the testing is actually just the testing part in the creating packages section. Um. You can read up on your own. Um. It yeah, testing is a relatively big topic in general, but to do it just um in practice maybe would be um I don't know, it might take an hour, it might take five minutes. I'm not quite sure. Depends on how how we do it. All right, anyway, um let's go on, continue with the packages, which is still somewhat more important than testing. Yeah. Um <clears throat> So we did the, we generated a package. Um, and saw the contents. So now before we do, um, so the, we will essentially have an exercise where you create another package and copy paste all the, um, all the epidemic content that we have into there and then make it usable. Now, before that, we'll need to talk about one more, um, one more topic. And that's development environments. So um, if you've done any extensive development in Python, for example, um, probably also in, in other modern languages, you will probably have used a development environment. Otherwise, this may be a new topic. So um, we don't we won't go into all that much detail, but hopefully enough that it makes sense why this is a good idea idea to do. And we'll do this using the my package package. So <clears throat> just as a reminder, there is a folder called my package here. And that folder contains this project.toml file. Now this isn't 
just for packages, um, any folder can contain a project.toml. And that can then contain a list of packages that um, whatever the project that you are working on in that folder um, needs those packages. That's um, just a good practice um, thing to, um, when you pass a project on to someone else, they, um, they can run it because they know what packages are needed. Now development environments automates most of that work. So first we'll need to specify a project and to, um, so we again use the package package, so PKG package to do this. So um, to specify a project, um, you actually specify a folder and then that folder will contain the project.toml file. Let's use my package. Now, it, again, it can be any folder. This happens to be a package folder and every package folder will contain a project file. Okay, so first activate my package. Now, um, Julia will basically, um, so this, okay, yeah. The way it automates making sure that all the dependencies are listed is that it will pretend that if a dependency is not listed there, you haven't installed it, right? So if I do using plots, we already installed plots in the previous exercise. So I should have it. I in fact do have it on my system, but it says uh, package plots not found in current path. So I have to actually install it to be able to use it. Package.add installs packages. I need to install the plots package. It shouldn't take, I mean, it will check if there's a new version. Uh, but the installation is extremely quick, even though there's a lot of packages because it didn't actually install anything. It just made sure that I, first of all, have it on my system. And then it listed it in the project.toml file, which is unchanged. So there's an, okay. I probably just needed to reload it. Yeah. So plots is there. So now um, I can use this to, oh, whenever in, in fact, whenever I, whenever I install this package, it will automatically install the plots as a, as a dependency. Also, um, there is this manifest.toml file, which contains much more specific information on exactly what, pack what packages I currently have. So you can also use this file to reproduce exactly the environment that I have right now. And there is a function for that that's um, instantiate. So first you activate the project and then you instantiate. Um, but yeah, you will find that on Google if you run into the situation that you need to exactly reproduce um, the environment. <clears throat> okay. So that's basically it. Um, in order, so to quick recap, <laughs> because this is a very, this kind of a subtle thing because it does, it didn't do much but it's a very useful thing to do. It's a very important thing. So first um, you create the file project.toml. Um, when you run uh, package.activate and the folder name, um, it can be dot for this current folder. It, if the project.toml doesn't exist, it will create it. Then, um, the idea is to list all the packages that you need, all the dependencies in that project.toml file. So to make sure that, um, that you are not forgetting a package, Julia just pretends that the package is not there unless it is listed. So you need to run package.add to add it into project.toml. And once it's added, you can actually use it. So let, let's just make sure that we can use it using plots. So yeah, that works. And I can use it to plot something, right? Okay. So this way you always know 
that when you hand your project over to someone, when you hand your when you put your package on GitHub, anything like that, um, people can run it because they will know what what the dependencies are. Okay, so that is about that topic. Um, so then let's go on to the exercise, um, which is also recap. So uh, create a package. <clears throat> so what I want you to do is to create a package called epidemic. And um, so use the package to generate function and you will also need to, um, and then um, basically install it, add it using develop and package spec functions. Then um, you will see that there is a project.tumble there. Um, activate that. And, um, and you can skip the test package since we're not going there right now, but install any other packages that are needed to actually run the simulation. I think plots is the only one if the animation function is actually there. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, so yeah, you can go ahead and start. Um, the epidemic.jl is here in the root folder of uh, the source material. It has using plots here, so you will need plots. So then just copy all of these functions into the new module you have created. Um, so into the package. Then you should be able to do using a, let's skip exercise two because um, it uses this greed package, but let's not do that. Uh, well, I mean, it uses this greed function from the uh, default package. Let's just go into, so do exercise one, create the package and then exercise three. So paste um, the contents of epidemic.jl into the source, um, into the module, and then use um, add an export line and export everything you need to run the simulation. Okay. Um, I will give you 10 minutes to do this, to get ahead of me. And then I will start walk, um, walking through the. So yeah, it is in fact a good point that um, we activated the my package environment. I also have it activated. So um, running package dot um, generate will work correctly. So to create the epidemic package, I would run package.generate epidemic. And it created two files. So now there is a file called, you cannot see the whole screen. Okay, there's a file a folder called epidemic. It has its project.tumble and a source um, epidemic.jl file. Okay. And this is exactly the same um, template with the hello world that we saw before. Okay, now to um, start, well, so that I can install it in the normal way while developing it, I can use the uh, package.develop. Um, and for that, I need the package spec function to get the package from the path. So uh, another patch is epidemic. Okay. I have an error. not found in project manifest or registry. So is this the problem you saw? It, is it path equals? Uh, it, was it path, path equals? Path yeah. Equal. yeah, path equals, right, okay. 
Yeah. Now it works. But now it did put it in my package slash project.tomu. And now I'm actually interested in seeing, um, so um, here, if I reload this file, it now has the epidemics package as a dependency. Um, yeah, if that happens by mistake, you can always delete it. Um, but let's just keep it there. All right. Um, now I'm actually interested in, so what happens if I deactivate the my package environment? So this will return me to the base environment, activated environment at, and it tells you what it tells you where actually your base environments uh, project.toml file is. So even your base environment has one. Um, let's see. Using um, epidemic. So it's not in my base environment. That's interesting. So I can install a package so that it doesn't go into my base environment. Okay, well, what I have to do then is run this again, now that I am in my base environment. All right. And it did a bunch of updates, but mainly it has added um, the epidemic package into this my uh, my base project or tumble file. Okay, and now whoop, I have some extra stuff here. So that now I can run using exam. Um, sorry, using epidemic properly. Okay. Now the idea was to go. So this is the. Um, epidemic.jl file. The idea was to go, um, I have it open in a different window here, to go into epidemic.jl and just copy everything and put it into this source file, this epidemic.jl. So let's put it here. Okay. And now I can run using epidemic. And I'm not exporting anything, but I can still run, let's say, make plants. Is it with a cap? Oh, well, let's just use a tab to find out. Epidemic dot. Um, oh, it didn't update. That's annoying. Uh, yeah, that's the typical trap that if you don't have revise, you if you're not using revise to track the changes. Uh, so the it, uh, develop doesn't do that alone. Mm -hmm. No, it's a typical uh, of Julia that if you want to track the changes in your source code, you should use a revise to track the changes in the package. Yeah. And then uh, just updating the source code will uh, like track the changes and update. But if you're not using revise, then uh, you should, uh, well, basically you have well, to the restart. restart. Right, yeah. Yeah. But on the bright side is that if you use Visual Studio Code for development with the Julia extension, then that will actually use a revise by default so it will work without okay. you having to know it. Yeah. Which actually I'm not sure it's a good thing that it works without you knowing it because then uh, when yeah, you then are you somewhere else it doesn't work. So. Outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the take home lesson I guess is that if you want to develop packages, check out this revise.gl package. It's yeah, uh, fundamental for your workflow. Make it easier. Or at least I mean it, if you want to develop packages in using the REPL, uh, test them using the REPL or using an notebook. If you are um, if you're running scripts, then this will always work because yeah, there is no just include the script, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I, anyway, I, now we have restarted the kernel. Sorry. No, I mean by packages, I guess I meant more library, but yeah. But yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. um, I guess the difference is libraries are bigger. Yeah, I guess. I mean, libraries are generally packages. I'm not sure if it goes the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so now we have updated the. Um, the kernel, uh, restarted the kernel, they run using epidemic again, loading plots into epidemic model from project dependency, which are okay. So there is um, using plots here, maybe I should just make this bigger or just make the window smaller. Okay, um, so there is using plots here, but in fact, the project.tumble doesn't contain plots. 
So I have it installed so things will work, but um, it's not a very, uh, it's currently not very stable. If somebody else tries to install it, it might break. So, but yeah, we can run, um, make plants and that takes, I think two parameters, no, three parameters in fact, 32, 32. And it has an immunity rate, I believe. Yes, it, has, it does have an immunity rate. Um, so here's the source. Whoop. And um, immunity rate is the probability that a cell is created as immune instead of uninfected. So let's create some immune plants, point two. Okay, so we have a bunch of plants that are showing as empty wide rectangles because they're not infected. Now, okay, so in order to make this, um, well, yeah, so we can currently run the simulation. Uh, we can do epidemic.update plants, and that will run a single time step. Um, plants is not defined because I didn't put it in a variable. Plants equals, okay. Oh, let's just do plants equals. Okay, and now I can run updates. <laughs> Sorry, um, I need three numbers here. Uh, we used eight time steps uh, for recovery, 0 0.02 as the death rate and 0 0.1 as the infection rate. And to see the difference, I need to print plants, except it doesn't really, um, the matrix is too big, so it doesn't look that great. Okay, but it is running. Um, let's say two colors dot plants like this. Two colors is not defined. Uh, I think if it's defined in the package, you need it's not exported. Sorry, yes, this is exactly what I was going to get to in the yeah. next um, Epi epidemic. Okay, right. The first time you run it, it compiles it, so it takes a moment. But there we are. Um, so yeah, to get get rid of this epidemic dot, um, we can do a bit more work so we can go here and write export and then list all the functions we want to export. Um, so we want to export make plants, um, probably update. Um, two colors would be good. Anything else? Uh, that I guess that's it. Maybe count infections and count deaths. Okay. Now again, if we restart. And then run using epidemic. We will get make plants directly. We will get update directly and we will get whoop, two colors directly. Now it's still complaining to me about the fact that the project.toml doesn't list plots as a dependency, but it does run using plots. So um, to fix that, I will do what we just did. Um, so right now we can run a couple of updates here. So we have a lot of immune cells, so it might not even get very far. Uh, immune plants. Uh, so to, yeah, to add the plots as a dependency, you could do it by hand, but I mean that this 
I have no idea where to get this and you shouldn't need to know. Yeah, um, yeah. So we'll do package.activate epidemic. I mean, you shouldn't need to know because you shouldn't be doing that by hand. Um, there's a much easier way to do it. So you do then package.add plots. Package is not defined. Um, yeah, so we need using package. Okay. Yeah. Plots should plots be a is not or... right. It needs to be a string because plots itself um, as a variable is not defined. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it actually fetches um, the latest version information from the registry. Since there are no updates, it doesn't actually install anything, um, but it does find, um, find the latest version information for all of the dependencies of plots. And then project.tumul gets um, the version string for plots. It also created again the manifest.tumul and that gets version strings for everything. Okay. So now we have an epidemic package. We could put this on GitHub and like uh, Luca mentioned, directly install it using um, a GitHub reference or we could even list it into the, um, uh, the package repository. I guess a small comment could be that if you want to register in the like official Julia registry, there are a few requirements on the package. For example, oh, yeah, in the license, not, there are some requirements on the name. So you need to specify at least the compatibility with Julia versions. Yeah. So for example, this wouldn't go through because you don't have a license and at least because you uh, don't specify what is the minimum Julia version which works with? I think the name would be fine. But yeah, we are also missing some. Um, we should have tests that may not be yeah. requirement, but that's a good thing to have. And mm -hmm. but yeah, this is the basics. And um, at least you can install this with a GitHub um, address, a URL. Okay, but yeah, that is. Um, all I have about packages. So it looks like we are going to go into macros and meta programming. Yeah. Should we have a break before it or should we go straight now till the end with meta programming? Um, we started at 22, because right? So I think we've been going 35 minutes. I mean, yeah, but I think yesterday yeah, so one feedback was that uh, after the lunch, uh, we had the whole session with only five minutes in the middle. So yeah. that's why I'm asking. Uh, what people prefer. Yeah, I mean, we prefer. should at least have a 10 minute break at some point, but yeah, we could do it now. It so, makes sense to do it now. Yeah, maybe uh, green or red, the green mark if you want to have a break now or red mark if you don't want to have a break now, if uh, we could have a quick feedback about that. So you, Yarno, want to have the break. Eh? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> because then we have a longer session. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just testing. Yeah. So 10 minutes break now, 10, 5, 10. 10? Yeah. How long would the break now? Yeah, that's 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes and then a short introduction about macros and metaprogramming. Yeah. 